Hey guys, this is Nick here tonight. Got Tyler uh, from Ring Nixon Retrievers. And today we have a special guest, Matt Mosier. He is a canine unit for the Clayton County Sheriff's Department. He's going to give us some great tips here tonight on obedience and kind of how to amp up your dog's drive. Um, with that, we'll just kind of get into it right away with Matt. And uh, I got a first question here. You know, on basic obedience, Matt, you know, what commands do you, what do you use and do you believe uh, they're important for a gun dog? Yeah, so um, obviously obedience is, is huge in anything you do, especially when you just have the, the ankle biter at home and you don't want them barking at, at yeah. the neighbor or whatever it may be. But the biggest thing with obedience is uh, you've got to stay consistent. You've got to be consistent from the start. And, um, and one thing that was neat with my kids, starting our pop Hawkeye, our hunting dog, my hunting dog, not my police dog, but was – just teaching them like what we want to say to him to get him to come back to us. And, you know, that was the biggest thing when we first got him. Yeah. So when you're staying, you know, when you're staying consistent, um, it, you know, it should be name command. Um, if they do it, if they do what you ask them to do, make sure you praise them. Yep. And if you go name command and they don't do what you do, then you need to have that correction and then reemphasize name what you want them to do until they do it. And um, by Matt, not to interrupt you, and I know we're going to yeah. get to this a little later, but with that correction, are you using a shot collar? Do you have a lead on them and you're pulling on them? Uh, what, what would you do for a correction, I guess? Yeah. So, so with my dogs, and I'm no far but an expert in, in dog training by any means, um, just have a lot of experience. And, and I was lucky enough to see a lot of different trainers train police dogs and how to do it. But um, so I'm a big, I use a choke chain a lot. Um, okay. that's, that's what I use a choke collar. And, and one thing that I learned, and I didn't know this until I got my second police dog was a choke chain is not for pain. You know, it's, it is not for, you're not trying to hurt the dog. You're not trying to choke the dog. It is all, it is all short pop correction to, and, and a dog, the reason they respond to it so well is because they don't like being knocked off balance. Like, and you're, when you're tugging on that, that leash that they're, they're getting moved around or jarred and it's all about their balance. You know, you're not trying to hurt them at that time. Oh, go ahead, Nick. No, that's, that's a good tip. I actually did not know that. Yeah. I used to use a, um, a choke collar all the time on Jackson, which Matt, I'm pretty sure you remember that him. Yeah. And it yeah. didn't seem to do shit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great point. Cause that, so my, my current police dog, I never had to put a pinch on her to get her to work when we were working obedience. And, and I think Hawkeye um, is probably going to be the same when I keep working with him. Yep. Um, but now my first police dog, I had to use a pinch collar okay. to, to train him just because he was more, he was just a stronger dog, strong willed dog, you know, and, and um, there's a lot of things to do guys. Like so some guys just throw on a pinch collar and, and don't know how to use it correctly. Um, you know, again, it's, it's short, uh, strong correction, but it's, you know, you're not pulling on it or trying to hurt them at all. Um, but no, so I, I'm, when I start my basic obedience, I use a, I definitely use a choke chain. That's, that's what I have found. And even you can just use a regular collar, but, um, I truly believe, and I, I don't know, one thing that I don't like about shot collars, I use a shot collar. Don't get me wrong. I, they have their purpose, but sometimes I think guys put on a shot collar and they think that this is, this is going to fix their dog. This yeah. is going to keep their dog from flushing out the birds at the end of the, yeah. The drive. But if they don't know their basic, they don't know exactly what they're supposed to do with that command. A shot collar is going to do nothing except for maybe ruin the dog yep. or scare them, whatever it may be. Um, so make sure you start off with those basic obedience commands. And when, when Matt, when you're talking basic obedience, um, obviously it might be different for canine and hunting dogs, but I'm sure there's some similarities what's uh kind of your basic obedience set when your dogs let's say three four months old that you focus on to bring you know to keep enhancing the dog so the, the first command that i work with um is, is to, for the dog to come here yeah um i mean obviously for any situation the dog runs out your front door gets out your fence you want the dog to come back to you yeah um and then and then after that um I, I, I work stay, um, mainly so I can, you know, feeding the dog, like my pup 
Hawkeye is extremely food. I, I wouldn't call him food aggressive, but he just loves his food. Like he just loves Diesel's, it. Diesel's yeah. the same way. Yeah. So, you know, for him to sit, stay, and it was, and it was super easy to teach him that. So do you, you know, use, do you use two commands then for sit and stay? Uh, so if I, so what I do, so if I want my dog to stay, I'd say Hawkeye sit and then Hawkeye stay. Okay. No, so I, I use know. with diesel, I just use sit and sit means stay. Okay. So I just do one command and I know there's different ways to do it. It's just how I was taught and that's how uh, my trainers taught me to do it. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Um, do you uh, use with uh, your canine? Is it, I mean, is it similar? Cause I, I've like, I've been working with my dogs, like an, it's called, I'm calling it an off command. Mm -hmm. I want them to basically, when they're running, I want to be able to say like off and to have them sit. I know like Nick, you can blow your whistle once and diesel will sit and just yeah. stay there till you, you know, send them whatever way. Um, do you know, is that something similar to what you do with your canine? Is that something you might do with your, with Hawkeye, you know, in the future? Yeah. So I, you know, I'm kind of, when I work the dog, my police dog all day, I, I feel bad for Hawkeye sometimes because he takes the short end of the stick just because I'm like, I don't want to work with a dog anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, so with my police dog, definitely if I, if I send my dog after a bad guy, um, I'll down my dog. I'll just yell, I'll yell Raven Plots. Yeah. And then she'll, she'll down, you know, right where she is. Yeah. Um, now with Hawkeye, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll get that far advanced with him. Yeah. Um maybe maybe um but no with the, with the police dog i do for sure 100 yeah. percent. we call that instead of a lot of guys will send their dog on a recall so the bad guy gives up i want your dog to come back yeah um my, my belief is i want the dog to run and lay down and continue to look at the bad guy yeah you know? and then i'll i'll give commands from there to either come back to me or i'll walk to the dog or advance or yeah. whatever whatever may be so yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, like you mentioned before, when you mentioned e-collar, how a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm going to put that on and dog's going to run after a bird and I'm going to hit that e-collar, you know, and I'm, it's going to make it stop. I just wasn't sure if, you know, if you transition kind of how you're speaking, your bad guy, you know, kind of into the pheasant world, you know, if, the fe if you have a running pheasant and you want your dog to stop, but not come back to you, stay where the you know, maybe where they last saw it or something, if that would be beneficial. <laughs> that would be impressive because once, Diesel's, be. on a, that's, once Diesel's on a bird, yeah, it's, it's, you it's know. like a race to the, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm running in track again in high school. Like, holy shit, I got to get up there. This dog's taking off, you know. Right. No, um, I, I definitely, I, I, I use an easy command a lot when I'm yeah. hunting. Like when I see I my dog get same. hurt. Is that like a, the kind of a woe command that a lot of people might yeah. use? Yeah, yeah but I just. down a little bit. When I see that dog getting birdie and, and getting into odor, I, um, I'll, I'll be like, easy, easy. Um, I, I think that I don't work it, I guess, or train it that much. It comes a lot with experience with the dog, I think. And yeah, I'll, I'll maybe tone him, you know, because he knows to come back. But I use a lot. Like, if, I, if my dog is um, out there and I want him to come back or, or slow down, whatever maybe, I'll just be like, you know, I'll just tell him to come here. Yep. And, then, and then as he's coming back to me, um right wrong or indifferent you know sometimes a lot of guys sometimes believe like if i tell my dog to come here he better come all the way back to me um i'll, I'll just give him an okay like as he's coming back i was like yeah. okay and then he'll he'll turn around and go do his yep. do his, his thing because so well nick knows obviously so my hunting dog prior to hawkeye his name was sheriff and he was actually a present to me um when i got hired to the sheriff's office and uh but sheriff is actually a, a pup of Nick's first dog, Jackson. Yep. Oh, nice. So he and he was a fabulous hunting dog. Like he was. Just, yeah. Sheriff had a drive like you wouldn't believe, and and he he just picked up on the on the easy. He he just made it, it was he just made it easy. I mean it was. It was Jackson was Jackson was the same way. I mean, yep. if you could breed a dog and have a drive in him, I would say his drive is almost better than Diesel's. Dog had no quit. You'd almost kill himself. I had a I had a kennel him. <laughs> right. Oh, he yeah. did. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, those dogs, man. I mean, that's where obedience comes into play there when you have a dog with that much drive to just be able to control it, you know. Yeah, yep. you know, not to get off topic. I, I trained him. I was what, 12, 13 years old, and all I did was run around with a pheasant dummy around my yard, and I'd let him out of a kennel and make him go find it. That's <laughs> all I did. 
<laughs> yep. Right. You loved him so much because he got out of his kennel <laughs> and ran around. Yeah. It's probably the only way he found it. <laughs> probably, followed, probably followed my scent. Yeah. So how, Matt, how long have, you know, when you do a training session with uh, either your canine or uh, with Hawkeye, how long do you usually um, run those training sessions for? And maybe how many do you do during the day? Yeah. So, so you gotta, you want to keep them short, shorter. And, and with obedience, you know, especially in the canine world, it's so easy to not want to do obedience because yeah. there's so much other fun stuff to do, you know, like yeah. let's go find bad guys in buildings or go on tracks and stuff like that. So you really yeah. gotta um, force yourself to make sure you set up a, a, a obedience course or, you know, take your time out, but you know, anywhere from 15, you know, 10, 15 minutes, you could probably extend it out to 20 minutes um in in the same way with hawkeye and you can and you usually can tell your dog if you know your dog well enough you're gonna see when that dog starts yeah like when i would get diesel back from the trainer you know i'd train him for 10 15 minutes and he was showing disinterest now uh since we have a daughter i train him two three times a week maybe at tops and i bet i could train him for a half hour i mean he he's just he's ready to go he's locked and he's dialed and he wants to go he wants to work uh he's a working dog but he's also going to be six years old so he knows he knows what it's about you know maybe a younger pup you want to ease him into such a long session yeah just like having a little kid teaching him something it's yeah short and yeah. fast yeah I, I always taught the you know your cup so whenever you're working a dog your, your cup starts to build up you start filling your cup up and whether it's you're putting stress on the dog or whatever it is on, on any kind of situation well, as soon as that cup starts to get full, try to try to try to empty it, you know, by giving them their toy and let them yep. you know, play tug or play fetch, whatever it is. So, so then all of a sudden that cup starts to empty out again. And then all of a sudden That's you a good idea. start filling yeah. the cup again and then, then keep, you know, drop it again. So yeah. How many, how many days a week do you think, especially for a pup? Cause I think, you know, this time of year, a lot of people are getting new pups, getting them ramped up for season. How many days a week? would you recommend that 10 to 15 minute session? Yeah. For a hunting dog, I think that, you know, two to three times a week would be fine. And, and you know, especially if you're working and you need something to do, let that dog burn some energy by t- trying to turn some obedience into fun, you know, and yeah. you can find different ways to do it. Um, yeah, but yeah. Two to three times a week would be, would be sufficient. I think. Yeah. So you were talking about fill your cup up, empty, empty it out. Um, you know, I know you know a little bit about building a dog's drive. Is that what you're using to build your dog's drive? Is the the cup scenario, I should say, or what is your what is your technique, or what do you believe uh, yeah. works the best? So, so I, I'm a big believer in when it comes to drive. It's kind of a natural thing in the dog right away. I mean, either your dog has hunt drive and prey drive, or it doesn't. Yeah. You know, when I got sheriff, I knew Jackson had um crazy crazy drive so it was an easy decision like this is going to be my hunting dog and if he's anything like his dad yep like this is going to be a good good decision now i'm not saying that you got you're going to make all your decisions based off of um the dog's dad or whatever but when i picked hawkeye and and back when i got sheriff i didn't know hardly anything i i just got him and then i got promoted to canine a few months later but with hawkeye I literally watched his dad freak out because they got a pheasant wing out and we're just, let's see. And I wanted to see what pup was going to be the more or less the dominant and go chase yeah. it and get it and be the king of the hill. And, and Hawkeye was that dog. So um, this, he's got so much crazy. This dog has got so much drive that um, I don't have to worry about that. And he, he chases shadows literally. I mean, he can't <laughs> move, he's not. and, but, but to build drive, um, you know, going back to those training sessions where, you know, I think, I think one of the podcasts I listened to you guys, you guys have a zinger. Yeah. And yeah. Tyler Nick, does. Yeah. And Nick, Nick, we talked about, you have a uh, something, you have some sort of. I have a DTS launcher. system that uh, it launches them 100, 120 yards out. Right. So I think that if you do like interval training in regards to one time you get, well, with a new dog, you're going to want a lot more fines, you know, so it's fun. It's exciting. And then make sure when that dog finds the the decoy you know that you put out there I'm assuming yep. that you, so if i understand it, the zinger has is a decoy that has or or a fake or yeah. a animal or you know dog yeah, so basically well it's it's a launcher um but it has a, a, a 
DT Systems receiver on it that gives off a duck sound, and then you put in some type of like docking, you know, the docking dummy, or any other type of dummy with scent on it, or you can put in an actual bird, a right. dead bird. Um, you know, I think it depends on if your dog's ready for what level they're at. You know, if right. they're ready for the feathers in their mouth or you know and those systems are really good for extending your dog sometimes yeah. you know you can only throw a dummy 30 maybe 40 yards right yeah. and then your dog sometimes doesn't want to go out because it's only used to going out that far yeah. so if you use those launchers and back them up to 60 70 100 yards i know diesel um i mean i haven't done it in a while i'll do 100 150 yard retrieves right now but he would used to do about 300 yard retrieves that was right. his longest yeah, so it so if you're at that point where you you know your dog can find scent and, and understands what he's looking for, um, you know it might be as simple as dragging the dragging the dummy through the yard and um, yeah. and letting him find it. But once that dog understands that, as soon as he finds it, make sure you're praising him up and, and sound like a little girl when you're <laughs> praising that dog up. You know, yeah. you know, get all high pitched voice and 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 love up love up on him and, and and do that as much as you need to. And then once you once you start, the dog starts understanding it's like, oh yes, it's playtime. And then you just start, then start to remove them, you know, start to only yep. do one or two or, or maybe it's a blind one where you don't have a, you know, you, you, you went out previously or you had your wife or daughter or kid, whatever, go out and hide it in the weeds. And, and then you cut, they come back and you go back out 20 minutes later, and, you know, maybe you have a bunch of them hidden out there. Maybe you only yep. have two of them, but that's how you kind of build drive in the dog where, they're finding lots of stuff and you're really pumping them up. I mean, just pumping them up. Now, and, uh, well, and hopefully for the, our dogs and the retrieving world is um, the reward is, is finding the, the bird animal or whatever, where the, the drug dog, when it comes to drug work, he, he you give them a toy, whatever. It is. <laughs> and now you don't give them the drugs. <laughs> no. You know, get it. Now, he, he, might, you know she, he or she might think that they're getting the, getting the drugs. So they don't understand yeah. what drugs are, but, yeah. No, they get a nice uh, uh, ball on a string. So <laughs> now you have a, a lot more experience with dogs, and I hear you do the praise thing. I know Tyler does uh, praises his dogs by giving them a treat. You know, do do you see you know one work better than the other? Uh, I guess what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So the best way I can explain this, and just as from experience with my police dog, was when I was in school in Michigan. Uh, we started out with Raven with a Kong. So she searched the drugs. She might get into odor and then we'd throw her a Kong and she was just like, Oh, that's a Kong. And my trainer said, let's, let's switch it up. So we switched it up to a, a yellow ball on a string and she was in heaven. Like she just loved it. And, and he goes, why give the dogs, you know, why not give the dog steak every time, you know, instead of hamburger, you know, if you're going to give the dog, make sure you give the dog the best, what it loves, the, what it loves to eat. We yep. all eat steak better than we like to eat hamburger. Yeah, so kind of the same thing. So, like, if your dog is, you know, I've seen it in bomb dogs or uh, any kind of dog that they're gonna like Hawkeye. He doesn't. He doesn't actually. I should. He's. I gotta work. I'm gonna get with Mr. Sorensen about to work on some retrieving stuff. Oh, are you really? Yeah. We need to get him on a podcast. Yeah, we yeah there you go. And um, so I'm gonna get with Mr. Sorensen about retrieving because he'll chase, but he's just kind of like, I don't know. Now, if I if I got him to bring back another. Uh, uh, the dummy because he knew he'd bring back the dummy or the toy or whatever to give him a piece of food I think that's going to be I think that's going to sell it for him I think they do that a couple times and it's going to be game over so have you um, thought about uh force fetch and are you familiar with force fetch a, a little bit um yeah I, I don't know I, uh Mr. Sorensen he's got all kinds I've, I've talked to him multiple times here now and he's he's excited he wants to do something so I just need to get with him and, and do some different things. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of different things. And I remember when I first got Diesel, him and I worked a lot with Diesel and uh, um, took him to the trainer and I'd bring him back and Sorensen would take me out on the water in the Mississippi. And then we'd go out to, actually to the gun club up there uh, in Clayton County and work up there. And yeah, no, you're in good hands. He knows, he knows a lot of, about it and uh, he's helped me some too. And, and he's obviously, the dog is getting better with the retrieving and he'll, he'll retrieve, but it's, um, you know, last year he's only five months old when I first had him out and we'd shoot a bird and he'd get it and want to attack it and just kind of be like, I got it, but he wouldn't bring it back. You know, and that's just being a, a new puppy dog that doesn't yeah. understand anything. And I think, you know, once they figure out that you're not trying to take it from him, right. 
that's yeah. the that's the key. Once they know, like, oh hey, he's gonna let me go find another one and yep. another one and another one. That's when that's when it hits home, and I feel like that's a big difference too. Yep, I would agree. I would agree, hundred percent. Yeah, and you know, and going back to the, I give you a good example for people that are listening. I want to do basic obedience, and I thought this was hilarious when I was taught this, but. When you're teaching a dog basic obedience, whether it's a sit, stay, lay down, whatever it is, you know, it should be, it should be name, um, what, it, what it, your command, yep. and, then, and then correction and then praise if, if the dog didn't do it. So the best way I was explaining this, so if I walked up to Nick and he was standing up and I walked up to Nick and I kicked him straight in the balls and I said, <laughs> sit down. That's not very fair to Nick, right? <laughs> but if I walked up, to, but if I walked up to Nick, and I said, Nick, sit down, and he doesn't sit down, then I kick him you in kick the ball. Now that now that's at least fair. I gave him a chance. So I think I think some people forget that. So yeah, the correction doesn't come first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just because you don't be hammering on your dog, and I and I see a lot of people do that. They'll be like they'll pull, they'll be pulling on their dog, and then they're like sit down, sit, and you're like. like on, so we talk. were, we actually were in Pella uh, last weekend, and there was a gentleman. He had a basset hound, and he was trying to get it to sit in front of some uh, tulips, huh. and he had him on a leash, but he clearly didn't train him. And for like twenty minutes, Bree and I were just sitting there. I said, "Look at this guy," and he would just say, "Sit, sit," and he would try to take a picture, and then he would yell at him, "Oh, go back here, and sit." So he clearly. The dog did not know, and he kept trying to do this over and over. I'm not even sure if he got a picture. I saw him at one point, like, the dog was sitting there, and he, like, tried to snap him like this. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, it, it is funny. And yeah. another thing I can tell, a lot of people, when, and I, I'm a firm believer in this, like, when you're telling your dog no, and, and I'm not necessarily talking about the obedience part of things now, but let's just say your dog's getting in the garbage. and Or even the dog starts to – maybe run out too far and this is probably a bad example where the dog's in the field but let's just say the dog's getting in the garbage and you yell oh, hawkeye no uh, i'm a firm believer and i was taught this that once you tell your tell your dog's name and whatever they're doing like they've now like cut off what they were doing and like whoa what do you want like what, what'd you say dad and, like, and then they don't remember like now he told me no like i don't get it like so they're, I'm really big into like making sure you're like, no, like right away, yep. whatever you're, you're, you know, my police dog, I yell fooey, um, yep. Hawkeye yell, no, you know, right away and be sharp and correct with it. And, um, so are you, were you saying you don't want to say their name and then no, you just say no. Yep. They're doing it. Yep. And then if they say, then if they quit doing what they're doing, then you say Hawkeye, good boy, or yeah. good yep. boy, whatever yep. it is. But, that when you or they're doing something you're like hawkeye and he's like what and then you tell him no he's just kind of like i like i listened to my talking. name yeah yeah like oh i'm excited he's gonna pet me you know yeah, yeah you know that takes me back to when uh diesel was in training and i was there helping actually a buddy of mine went with me it wasn't tyler uh went up to help train and she said well is your dog steady and he said yeah kind of and she looked right at him and she goes there's not a kind of steady he either is or he isn't so he's not steady. And he goes, well, no, he will, you know, sit here and stay for a while. He, she said, well, then he's not steady, you know? So it's like that fine line, you know, where is your line? Like to him, he was somewhat steady, but to her, not at all. Like steady is steady, you know? So th yeah. those are things that, you know, you, you as watchers and listeners, you can take that as far as you want and as deep as you want. We're just trying to bring you information. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, and, and again, going back to the, the basic obedience when and what I was getting at this kind of jump around sorry but the no is being consistent and, you know just like instead of if you say no one time and then your wife comes downstairs and goes nah -uh, uh -uh, you know, <laughs> you know like, yeah what you know and I, I see that all the time it drives me bonkers <laughs> or, or the or even like you want them to come here and and one time I'm saying Hawkeye here and the next time someone's yelling Hawkeye come he, you know, and just like, no, it's one command. Cause I want my dogs to hunt for everybody in the party. Yep, so the first thing I do, first thing I do is I say, okay, guys, this is his command. You see him, you see him getting out there too far. You know, this is what you say to him. You want him to come yep. back you know, or make yep. sure you let me know or whatever it may be yep. and, and get yep. him back. So. And I think that's important too, is, you know, 
especially if you're going to hunt with a couple buddies is sometimes the dog you want them to expand to where your friends are you know so that way if there's a bird over there they get a shot at something and just kind of running through it with them before you get out to the field like hey you want him to come back it's his name and this is the one command not yep. like you were saying so i think that's good for you know a good nugget for the listeners that are listening to this that are going to yeah. take their dogs out you know hey yeah you're the controlling your dog but at times it's nice to when you're hunting with a couple other people to let them know if they see them going towards danger or something and you don't see it to yep. be able to you know recall them and bring them back for safety or something of that nature yeah, and you, you're just going to hunt it. You get into a spot where you can't see, you know, you yeah. can't see the dog, or you're walking through the middle because we're, we're, we're the ones that have the dogs, and yep. you know, we're going through the thick stuff, and everybody's kind of on the outside you know, to see what's going on. This year, I tried something new. I actually uh, put a bell on him. Oh, yeah. And uh, at first, he was very unsure what it was, but now, uh, end of the year, it really paid off. Um, like, see where he was at and i've hunted some pretty big groups last year so it, it really it did work it worked really well right uh and diesel will point diesel is a pointing lab so he does point so that helps too because sometimes i couldn't see if he stopped or if he was pointing i had no idea yeah, yeah. Was quiet you know yep and yep. i got like i've got the sport dog one that has the actual little beeper on it oh. um which is nice it's kind of similar to the the bell you can just hit the beep and see you know where they are and i know you mentioned earlier you were talking about shot collars and that you use them and what it like how are you introducing your dogs to those collars yeah so i didn't i, I did use a shot collar very minimal um with with hawkeye this season at a young age but the biggest thing i think is important for people listening is just because you crank it up to 12 doesn't mean that that dog is going to get a response. I, I literally, I put a shot collar on my arm and I, and I turn it on. And when I get, when I can just feel it, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll either leave it or maybe go one more. Yep. Um, but most time I leave it and I'll, then I'll put it on the dog to, to make sure that I'm not, you know, uh, yeah, a shot collar is not to hurt people. I get this all the time. That's mean. It's inhumane. Yep. No, a shot collar is a couple things. It's, it's to correct your dog and to protect your dog. Those yep. are two things that I always think that are most important. I yeah. want to protect it if it's run, you know, I live here in kind of a busy street. If Diesel would take off and he wouldn't listen to me, I could just hit him with a nick and he would just stop. So I'm yeah. protecting him. Yep. And then the correction part, like Matt said, it's not to hurt him. Uh, you know, my trainer said that if your dog yelps, so if it's on two and you don't think it's very high, but your dog yelps, it's too high. Okay. Yeah. So you need, you need to turn it back down to one. So that's something I do. And I always test it even before I put it on diesel and it's always on the same setting, but I always test it just because who knows if there's a short or, you know, something and it really zaps him. I don't, you know, I don't want to hurt my dog. Absolutely. And, and you know, going back to introducing it, um, you know, once, once I put it on the dog and, and that dog, so I, I, I'm a big believer in, in that do, a, a heel, a hear command, the dog come back to you. And it, and it doesn't have to be here. It can be any, any, I mean, my police dog, he listens to the Polish command, Hutch. I mean, that's what, you know, Hawkeye's come here to every time. Get him <laughs> active. <here all> <laughs> you can pick him up, introduce him to everybody. Yeah, come here, buddy. Yeah, he's a, look, over here. Oh, yeah, look yeah. at him. He's, he's gorgeous. A big old looking dog. dog. <laughs> what's he, what's he weigh, Matt? He, he's 70, uh, a couple months ago, he's like 72 pounds. No, no. I know he's now gonna, he has, he's, he's going to be pushing uh, diesel weight here. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. good boy, good boy. Oh, that's good. So, um, but I want him, to, you know, the come the the come here, and uh, he obviously is. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so it but works. He, it does, right? So he's got to understand that. So then, once with an e collar, like I, I have a tone on mine, a beeper. So I'll beep it with the command to get him to. So he understands that. I can beep it, and then he'll um, – he'll, heck, I never – I rarely have to shock the dog in the, in the field. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, every once in a while, I, I'll have to beep him, you know, and he'll, he'll come back. And he was even doing that last year at the end of the year. I mean, it was, how, it was, it was good. Not to interrupt you, but how, how did you get him like, – you had a great year last year when he was five months, and, uh, you know, your fan on our page of Instagram, you saw it. Um, how did you get him – like into that and you know what was your steps to get him to find you all those ring nooks so 
so to be honest with you, Nick, Northeast Iowa right now is, is hot. Like, I mean, I, I'm lucky enough. I work for the sheriff's office and, and just driving the county roads. I see birds all the time right now, and, and I'm, I'm excited. So yeah. me, and, me and a buddy had, knew, knew of a good spot um, that he farms for. And um, so it's just kind of dumb luck. Sometimes luck is in your favor. And, and I told Jack. You need that too. That, right. I said, I told Jack, I said, let's take him out. Let's try, let's, let's try to shoot a bird. Um, I said, if we kick one up, let's not go bang, 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 bang. Like, let's not, you know, hammer at one. Let's maybe one shot. If we miss, we miss. But I don't, I don't know if he's gun shy at this time yet. You know, I don't want to. And I said, if he's by you and I, and I shoot, praise him up, love on him. And I'll do the, and I'll do the same. If you shoot, I'll, I'll love up on him. Well, we literally stepped, we, we were hunting this pond and there's a bunch of nice grass around the pond and, um, I literally stepped off of the field drive and took maybe two steps and I kicked up a rooster pheasant right in front of us <laughs> and, and one shot, uh, down bird. And, you know, he's just like, what's going on. And, uh, I walked him over, you know, give him, you know, I'm, I'm big on, you know, find a bird, find a bird yep. and, uh, dogs working and, and, and he didn't know, like, you know what I mean? So finally I got it and played with him. You know, I just let him play with it. Yep. I started throwing it in the weeds and he's getting it and, not bringing it back, but it, to him, it was, he got it. Like that was his, yeah, you know, yeah. his thing. And, um, you know, and if I would have let him, he probably would have took it back to the, to the truck and, and laid down with it. Like it's like his thing. Oh yeah. But, well, so anyway, we, we, we could put it in the vest and, and every so often I would just throw it out and let him get it and he'd see it. And, and to be honest with you, that's all it took. That, that was, that was really all it took. And, um, obviously my experience with, with handling other, dogs police yep. dogs and handling other pheasant hunt dogs you know i'm on my third pheasant hunting dog and uh it i understand like i understood odor like how how odor yep. works and when the dog is in odor i mean by the end i'm not i don't want to toot my own horn because this next year could be completely different he could have forgot everything that he that he knew but uh he I, I, I really could tell when there was a, a bird close compared yep. to a, a bird running with yep. him and, and i was and i was actually just going off of his tail yeah oh yeah and, he feels uh, the same way. He feels yeah, the same and way. I was just exactly. going off of his tail, and he, I, I, I'd be, I tell guys we're hunting with him, like, we got one running, get ready, and sure enough, kick, he'd kick one up, <laughs> kick one up, and then he'd, you know, then the next time he'd be working it a little bit different. I'm like, oh, there's one close, get ready, and it, it was just a fantastic year. It was, it was exciting, but there's birds. You know what I mean? Like there is birds, yeah. and this year's going to be better yet because yeah. we didn't have a harsh winter. We don't. Uh, as long as, co- as long as COVID dry. didn't kill the pheasants, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know when i was when when we were growing up nick there were some birds in the area and then they then they're like gone and, yep. and now we're finally starting to see some birds around here and i'm excited and, and and i put i we took them on a trip we went out, out to north central iowa and put them on a bunch of birds like i mean a bunch of birds and um and again that helps i think the you know going back to your guys's conversation the other day on your podcast about the pheasant farms yeah uh, i think I think a young dog getting on lots of birds is so important. I really do. Well, and I know, I know I brought this story up, but, uh, uh, it, it ranged true. So I hunt diesel pheasant farms every year, warm them up. And then when season ends, I hunt them on pheasant farms too, just to wind down the season, keep them active. Yep. Uh, my sister's boyfriend and I, and I, I think I mentioned this on our first podcast, but I'll say it again. We went to a place where a guy said that he hunted with German short hairs. Now I'm not, I think German short hairs are great dogs. I'm not saying it's a dog or anything. I just think it's the experience of my dog. They ended up losing, uh, like he said, like three birds or five birds the, a couple of days before that, and they couldn't find them. So we went out hour and 15 minutes, and we limited out. And he was like, how many did you lose? And we said, we didn't lose any. And he was like, I got some of the best dogs that come out here, and you didn't lose any? And then I said, well, I take them to these pheasant farms. And they kind of made fun of me. And I said, well, it's probably why we didn't lose any. You know, there's scent all over those pheasant farms from people hunting it day in and day out. So I, I, I have to agree with you. It, I don't, I hate comparing pheasant hunting to finding drugs, but it, when it's you're, similar. I, right. So when you're, you know? when you're in a, when you start your, your, your dog on drugs, you, you have hides in that room. You have lots of finds that get that dog excited. And then, and then even once your dog gets a little bit more experienced, our trainer was big on this. I might be first in line for the, you know, for this scenario. Yep. And then the next time I'm, I'm last in line. And the reason it was that way, because the, the odor was starting to pull out even more. So going back oh. to Nick's theory, 
you know, there's at a pheasant farm, you're going to have so much odor in small places where that dog has to figure it out. It's like a puzzle to them. Yeah. You know, they're, they're working it out. And the same way with drug hide, either you have, you know, if I have a, a pound of marijuana <laughs> in, in, you know, in a, in a cupboard, that's going to fill up that whole room. The dog is going to be like, like he's going to smell it from three rooms back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, compared yep. to compared to a gram, and and it's kind of the same thing. They got they you work that problem. It's a problem to the dog. You know, he figures it out. You you won. You're you're making your dog a little bit smarter. I I really believe that. And, and even with a pheasant farm, you're building drive. You know, you're oh, they're, sure. they're exactly. just oh, bird, 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 and then you. Then you hopefully in a pheasant farm, if you wanted to, you you could eliminate some of the birds. You know, by yep. next time we only put four out. Yep. And then you go to a real life scenario, and, and you you go to a field. Your dog is going to be hunting. Like I mean, that dog is going to think there's going to be oh, birds yeah. every corner. Yeah, it might not be. There might there might not be a single bird in the field. You know, this year there was almost a bird every corner. Uh, I, I shot like shit, so I didn't hit nothing yeah. this year, but there's a bird every corner. <laughs> I tell you, if the bird numbers are better than they were last year, this it's going to be a good season. You know? I'm, I'm really excited. I've seen, I saw a lot of, a lot of birds um, in the mornings. I would take a different route to the sheriff's yep. office every morning here in Northeast Iowa. And I, there wasn't rarely a, a route, and, and I wasn't necessarily looking for pheasants. Like I, I literally just took a different route every day, and I would see pheasants. And that was that hasn't been like that for the last few years around here, and, and now it is. So I'm, I'm excited. I really am. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> we're uh, we're gonna be planning a trip here to South Dakota, and I know you used to go to South Dakota. You got any good stories from South Dakota, Matt? Oh, I got thousands of stories, probably. <laughs> um, you know, we. So when I was younger you know, my grandpa, he took us everywhere. And then my uncle just kind of carried that tradition over and, and took me. Like I was just lucky enough to be a little guy carrying a BB gun. They were taking me, taking yep. me different places to pheasant hunt. But we, um, we literally, so we were going, oh, since college throughout, we were, you know, twice a year, there's usually two trips to South Dakota a year to make sure you got those two, five days. Yep. In. And we yep. might not do all five days. We'd do three or yeah. um, two sometimes, depending on how much time we had. But you know, right away, it was really good numbers and stuff. Hopefully that the numbers here in Iowa are good. So I'm assuming that the numbers hopefully in South Dakota are just as good. Uh, but South Dakota, man, it's, when it was, when it's hot and heavy, it's a different, it's a different breed out there. I, I mean, I've literally seen hundred bird flushes before out there. And, and that's just, just crazy. Yeah. You know, so, we, Nick and I saw a hundred bird flush on private land that we could have hunted. Then we hunt public ground that first year we were out there and, it was just trampled through, but you know, you yeah. know what we, we what we found out there, and I don't know if you guys are the same. So we, you know, you get the map and it shows all the public hunting stuff. Yep. We would literally go hunt like the wildlife management areas, like the water, the waterfowl management area. So there's water. Yeah, we've it's, done that too. It would yeah. be so dry out there that those birds needed to be around water, and we had our best luck um, doing that. Yeah, well, we did that. that we did it this past year, and. Uh, Tyler ended up falling in and boots. Right. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was <laughs> ridiculous. But I'm walking through cattails and Nick's like, oh, I'll go around this way. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go this side. Didn't realize next thing you know, I take a step and it waters up to my knees and I'm like, gee. And I'm walking back to the truck, you know, it's freaking five, six hundred yards away, soaking wet. I'm like, oh my God, let's just. We didn't call the day, though. We did not call the day. Right? I. I brought some extra gear, so yeah. he, he had some extra <laughs> my gear. My dumb ass left my extra socks and stuff at the Airbnb we were at. Right. You know, he had some. We, we uh, uh we, a couple years ago, well, it's been longer than that now, but I got to go on a, a trip with a buddy of mine that lives out there. His um, his wife's stepdad owned, owned a bunch of property out by Mulbridge, and it was the best hunt I've ever been on, guys. Like, it was silly. Like, I mean, we were shooting sharp tail grouse to, no. uh, to the, to the pheasants and, and, it, and we were on all private ground. It was, man, that's it was fabulous. Crazy. It was a great hunt. I mean, there wasn't a day that we, you know, I think there was five of us and I, there wasn't a day. I don't think that we didn't limit out. Yeah, it was, it, it man, was crazy. fun. I don't think any, I've ever even seen a sharp tail grouse. Any plans on going back, Matt? With now that you got Hawkeye sometime? You know, I definitely, definitely want to I, I told I tell the wife all the time like every Saturday morning for sure I want to um 
just even if it's just one spot around here, I want to get out and just go, you know, just just to get him out and, and do do something. It's good for me too to get out and walk around. But no, I'd love to get back out to South Dakota. Um, our deer hunting plans are going to change a little bit, so there's some talk of maybe trying to get out, um, like around second season deer hunting, maybe trying to make a trip out to South Dakota at that time. But um, yeah, we uh, we are thinking of going to South Dakota around first season deer hunting. I would be skipping deer hunting this year. It's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the reason for that, uh, we went last year opening uh, two weeks after op- the opener. I think actually, yeah it, it was not we actually ran into the weather was 15 degrees out there it was cold oh, wow. it was really good but all the crops were in yet and okay. we still every day we went out we still limited out we just couldn't hit shit we both bought new guns and <laughs> never shot them before and then we took them out there mistake, <laughs> <That's a bad laughs> mistake. yeah i'm actually i'm actually saving money right now i, well, I messaged you uh, a nope. few months quite a few months ago I'm, I'm actually so we were out near mason city and doing some pheasant hunting and we stopped at Mills Fleet Farm on the way home. And, um, I picked up that Winchester SX4, and I thought, "Nice gun." I'm like, "This is my gun." And I start, yeah. and I thought I'd seen Nick say something about owning one or whatever. And we messaged back and forth, and I just haven't bought it yet. But uh, no, I think the gun itself is awesome. Oh yeah. Uh, the the you know Tyler can speak a little more to this because he researched a little bit more than I did. But the pull of it. Uh, we needed to add a couple of spacers into the butt of the gun for whatever reason, it really screwed my shit up and I couldn't hit nothing. Tyler was the same way. It's like, yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't as long as it needed to be. And I'll let Tyler talk about like the pull up, but yeah, no, it's a great gun. Yeah. So if, when you get it, thinking that you're going to get it, sounds like you want to. <laughs> oh yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, what was it? A $700 gun or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. What I think they're, they're like six, six seven, eight hundred. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a, phenomenal gun for under a thousand dollars you know i we've i've shot a lot of shells through it already no jams i've never had no any issues with it besides hitting stuff (laughs) big issue (laughs) however um yeah i got to looking at it and i'm like you know there's got to be something both of us can't be missing with you know with the gun um and it can't comes with an extra butt spacer so it drops like the the heel comb or whatever that's called on the back of it to, and then the trigger pulls just a little bit further. So, man, we switched that um, before we did, a, we did a after season hunt at a preserve. Um, we switched that. We both bought the same. We had the same ammunition, right? The Browning BXD was that. Yeah, that that's the was? Browning BXDs. Yep. And that day, we couldn't miss anything. Right. Oh, and ever since then, I've taken out clay pigeon shooting a few times, and it's been been solid so just that's something to think of if you get it and you know oh it's something you're struggling with and for the listeners out there if you know the sx4 definitely look into it it's an awesome yeah, it was the gun of the year in 2018 i believe yeah when that's they right. first came out with it yeah. yeah so i mean it's tried and true it shoots super nice i just yeah. was getting frustrated with it because i had a couple birds get up in front of me that i could have hit with my hand and i missed them so <laughs> I tell you what, though, South I mean, people might think I'm crazy for this, but I think South Dakota birds are tougher. Oh, <laughs> I agree with that. Have, I agree with that. They have Kevlar on them. There's no joke. There is Kevlar in there. We, their- we've, we've had that discussion almost after every time we didn't get a bird. I'm like, there's no freaking way to hit that sound, bitch. You know, you know? I, I, I sometimes, you know, it, it could be the steel shot, you know, because when you're hunting public out there, you got to use steel shots. So. Yep. You know, yep. I'm like, well, maybe it's a steel shot or whatever, but I always joke around with Jake Smith, you know, he, he buys his cattle out there because they're tougher because of the weather conditions and stuff. And I'm like, that's what it's got. The pheasants are tougher. Yeah. All the animals are just tougher out there because of the weather. Hard bodies out there. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, those... you know, we, we, um, we stay, we usually stay in Mitchell and then we drive, we get up in the morning and we drive an hour or so away in a, in a different direction. And we got a, um, one of my cousins has a buddy that lives like south of Sioux Falls, and he kind of gives us the report. And nice. He'll have to come with us. He he brings. Oh my goodness, he's got a new um, a new German short hair. It's all black, jet black. Like oh, that'd be that'd be a cool looking dog. Oh, a beautiful dog. And talk about energy. Oh my yeah. goodness, I don't think the dog literally hunts on four legs. It just bounds the whole time. Like it just bounds until it points. It's, yeah, I mean, it's incredible how German short hairs can they can literally just go all day and yeah. diesel can go all day but he can't go like they can go all day like they can just go yeah, they 
I mean, that's why you see people running them next to their four wheelers and UTVs, <laughs> you know, just so they're running miles just to wear off energy. Yep. They're good dogs. Uh, Megan has that Gordon Sutter and she has to take him to the park every day. Otherwise he'll, he'll sometimes ruin shit in her house. Oh, he, we, just, he just, he just wants to run. Yeah. I really believe if I didn't have my police dog in the house, Hawkeye would have stuff just completely ruined. I mean, it would just be, they can, them two can wrestle and, and play yep. and stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm lucky now, lucky enough that Diesel, he's kind of getting that age where oh, yeah. he's just, he chills out. Yep. Well, you'll have to get a, you know, pretty soon you have to get another puppy, Nick, and then. Uh, t- we have an agreement two years when he's going to be eight. So that'll be, that'll be coming soon. Yeah, we kept, um, well, Hawk, Hawkeye is intact for now, and we're going to maybe, maybe breed him at some point. We find the right dog or something. But. I so wanted to breed Diesel. I just didn't have, uh, well, I still would breed him. I just haven't found anybody that has a, a dog that I felt like was, I just don't want to breed him to anybody, you know. I want right. to make sure it's a good, good line. I'm only going to do it once. Like, let's get yeah. it out there. But I just haven't found anybody that has a good female. Yeah, we – um. Well, his his dad's a chocolate and his mom's a yellow, and I got a, a black lab. And then even kind of um, with your, you know, Jackson and Denali, yep. I ended up with a kind of a you know white and a and a black. I ended up kind of with a red lab. So yep, yep. It was super man. I, I miss Sheriff a lot, but man, he could he made things easy when it comes to pheasant hunting. That was for sure. Yeah, Jackson did too. He didn't have – I don't think I even had commands for him. I just let him go. <laughs> so, go, go ahead. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, I'm all about obedience and stuff, but sometimes it's just really good just to sometimes let your dog hunt. And I mean, that's why we use them, right? Because yep. yep. they, they're naturally – they know how to hunt. And if you can, you can have them hunt, just let them, let them be as long as you don't ruin it for the rest of everybody and, and keep them – you know, they ain't going down, down range where they're yeah. kicking yeah. up birds and stuff. I've been, I've been in those shoes both – but as a as a hunter without a dog and seeing somebody have a dog downfield, like oh that sucks because I know how that is. And I've also been the guy that had a dog and he's just running. Yeah. running well, we've all been there. Oh, yeah. we've all been it's, there. It's a shitty feeling, that's for sure. When you're the handler and your dog busts a bunch of birds out. Yep. But I mean, when you when you got young dogs, you know, and I think that's something for handlers to recognize too is your dog's young. They're I mean, think about when you first started hunting, you know, there's a, you had to learn, you know, and the dog's doing the same thing. They're going to make mistakes. You know, it sucks, but that's why you keep bringing them back out and keep reinforcing their commands. Keep, keep on that obedience and you'll turn your dog into something good, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, even going back to the choke chain thing and I, I I like the choke chain and I'm not saying the cure all answer, but, um, something to do when you guys are putting it on your dogs. And I learned this again in Michigan at, at a, from a guy that's a lot, he'll know more about dogs than I'll ever know. But anyway, when you put that choke chain on the dog and you're looking at the dog, you should make a P like, so the choke chain should make a P. So I should like, okay. It's going to come out the other loop and go down. So it looks like a P as you're putting it on the dog. And that way it's, it, it, and it should be the opposite. If you're healing, like I heal on the left side. Yep. And I'm assuming most of you guys do too. So when you heal or you're given correction, it, it just, it's smooth. You know, you don't have it backwards where it's getting hung up. You can only yeah. you pull on it and go yeah. back in place. And I think that's big too, especially when you're trying to teach your dog to heal. You know, you got Ty- to go. Tyler, what side do you have your dog's heel on? He shoots, uh, my dog's heel he on shoots. the right because I'm left-handed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, I, I've, I've read kind of both ways. Um, and it's funny because Lola – uh, my second one she would rather heal on the left hand side of me um and some people say that you know dogs are more you know how some people are right-handed some people are left-handed you might just get a a right-handed dog which would mean they'd still heal on your left right but she you know when i pull her up to like a the line when i'm running the zinger winger uh when i pull her up to sit by me she sits on the left and then brings it back but if i say the heel command she'll sometimes sit on my right so I, she's more comfortable on my left hand side but murphy uh, the older one he's on walks no matter where we're going he's always on my right hand side right so but, matt to go back to kind of what you're saying uh, a couple steps you were saying you know i'm gonna need to get a new dog here in a year or two you because 
Toby Froze. Well, this is kind of my belief too. You believe that that younger pup will learn from that older pup, and you believe that's a good like. Should you do that? Should you not do that? I guess. What do you think the ins and outs for that? Oh, oh I what, think I think it's great. Should you be worried that the younger pup could potentially build bad habits in the older pup? Usually, those traits are you know concrete if you keep reinforcing them. But I mean, uh, there could be some concern there. I guess. Yeah, no, so I, I honestly believe that if you have a dog that has good enough drive, when you get them out of the car, like you get sometimes you get dogs that want to fight, and I don't watch Hawk Island being that guy, that dog, but, <laughs> you know, you get them out of the car, and, and sometimes they're, they're ready to they'll get aggressive towards you because they're ready to get out in the field and get going, you know what I mean? Yep. But there, there's other dogs that just, like, hit the ground, and they're going after another dog because they, they don't know what the hell they're doing, you know? Yep. I, I really believe that if you're – no matter the – the distractions so for instance diesel he's gonna know he's he don't care what anything else no. is he's gonna hunt you know yep. he and doesn't that's, care about any other dogs yep and, I, and hopefully that's for the other other dogs you know or other people that are listening that that happens because i think with a young dog following an old dog that's fabulous you guys have all seen the dog that walking and you're kicking its mouth every time you're taking a step through the wheel yep. you know? yep. and, and that sucks when that happens but hopefully when a young dog like that is sees another older dog working they're going to follow it and then all of a sudden they find a bird together for instance you know yep wow like what a great experience that is for for your young your young well, dog and to bring that up uh so crazy story diesel i never taught him point he just naturally does it um tyler's dog started pointing this year yeah she never pointed before right here <laughs> and then and, yes i never did anything with it and what we hunted how many times did we hunt? We hunted a good amount of times. Uh, yeah, prior, we probably hunted prior, 10, or, ten or we probably hunted twenty times ago or so last yeah last two years. And yeah, my youngest one, she started pointing on a lot of birds this year, which I don't know where she got it from, but you know, like you said, learning from the older ones. Yep, no, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer, and and that goes back to, um, you know, I I'm trying to think, Nick. I think Sheriff hunted with Jackson. He did. So I think it was with your uncles in Rickardsville. Yep. Yep. Down yeah, there by that semi barn thing yep, or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Paisley trucking. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's where it was because Diesel hunted out of his mind that, or Diesel Jackson hunted out of his mind that day. He did. And I can, I can remember we came out with some birds, but I'm pretty sure he was with us then. Yep. And he would have been young then, but. I just, I, and I've seen it. I've just seen it multiple times throughout the years, and in, in hunting, we're either with a dog, with me having my own personal dog or not. But you know, other dogs just being around. It's it's good. You know, I, I think one of the questions you guys sent me was, you know, should we should you do it, or you know, when you're training, you know, how much time do you allot to this and that? And I think that you obviously need to create your your base by, it, by the dog by itself, because yep. otherwise you start. You start giving one dog commands, and you got another one out there jumping around. He doesn't know you're 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 just going to frustrate yourself. But um, you know, once you get each dog by their own to, to learn to know the base work and what you want them to do, then I think you have to you have to bring them together. And and you know, going back to the canine world, same thing. If I if I'm going to expect my dog to do a bunch of building searches, and I don't ever put the other guys involved, the other guys coming in to clear the house or whatever, and yep. maybe it's some weird helmets or face masks or whatever that dog's gonna be like whoa what is that like that's that's not normal to me and then they're gonna start being different so no i think it's super important to train with multiple dogs scents some dogs are like just love smelling other dogs whatever it may be you got you got to do it you definitely have to do it yeah Yeah. you know so i think the next thing we need to talk about is when we hunt together (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely well you know what we get we get on chris your dad and we yeah. get him to finish up the old uh the the grain bin yeah the she should the she should, whatever it is but it's, <laughs> I think you guys come up and you know what you can stay I'll, I'll line up some spots up here that I, I i promise we'll we'll be able to see some birds so nice yeah, no, we That's would, the, uh, there. There's one. I got one. One done. So you guys got to come up to the next couple. So oh, we that's we can handle we, that. We can handle that easy enough. Uh, yeah, you know, 
that would be that'd be great. And some of the times we're starting this year, we're going to film our hunts too. So I mean, sure. it might just be a guide for one of us for one hunt, just to just to film the whole hunt, right? And, or film that field and then just take turns. So I, I got a buddy that he just retired as canine in Waverly. Um, Josh Burrow is his name. He's a huge bird hunter, loves to fe- hunt pheasant. But anyway, he he has a GoPro, and I'm not sure how he actually does it. He has a GoPro mounted on his gun, and he runs with pointers. Yep. And um, he's got some super cool uh, video of of shooting pheasants. It's it's really neat. So nice. um, maybe that's something uh, I can yeah. I can figure that out and get let him know what kind of what he uses and get that to you guys. And maybe that's something yeah, you guys would appreciate that for sure. Maybe we can have him on a uh, call. Get you two guys on here. We can we right. can all talk. Yeah. No, Josh would be great. So he's a I think right now the walleye opener opened up in uh, like Mille Lacs and he's uh that's where he is right now. Not so. smashing walleyes. Oh yeah, he's he's been ham- he's got a spot. I think he's got a spot up there. Nice. But yeah, you know he uh, yeah he ran he ran a couple canines too. Super guy loves the bird hunt. Big bird. Oh, yeah. Nice. So awesome. Well, Matt, I appreciate you getting on tonight. And if there's anything we can do for you, again, reach out and let us know. And we appreciate you being part of Ringnecks and Retrievers. And we look forward to having you on again soon. Yeah, thanks, guys. And I just, again, guys, you guys, what you guys are not only doing for pheasant hunting, but for the sport of hunting is fabulous. And, and the more you guys keep this up, I think it's going to be good. Because, you know, as a young kid that started out hunting, uh, I learned a lot, not only of hunting, but respect to people and land and, and everything yep. that goes with it. So, the more that we can get people in, into this sport, I think the better it is. For Absolutely. Everybody. That's, that's the whole point of it. Uh, we, uh, we want to get everybody involved. Don't remember. doesn't matter what kind of dog you want to use or anything like that. Let's just get going. Let's hunt. Yep. For sure. Awesome. All right. All right until guys. next yeah. time guys. Have a good night. Peace. Yep. You guys. See you later.